YouTube statistics now for nine weeks. So we're on to week 10. And in this video, I'm gonna let you know whether or not I managed to get monetized in that time. Hi, I'm Bev, and I've had this channel, Generation Exceptional, for around 18 months now. But it's only in the last 10 weeks that I've started to track my statistics. And I made a decision 10 weeks ago to give myself 20 weeks in order to get this channel monetized. When I started this 20 week personal challenge, I had just under 600 subscribers and around about 1300 watch hours. So I had quite some way to go. I wasn't particularly consistent in uploading videos and I didn't really have a clear idea of what my channel was about. I got so despondent at the lack of growth <laughs> that I was about to quit. And I talked about quitting in this video up here. Thankfully, a fabulous <laughs> community of Gen X has persuaded me not to. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to be intentional about it. And I need to find a way to keep track of what I'm doing. So the best way to do that is to measure. You can't manage what you don't measure, as the saying goes. So I thought I need to start measuring my performance and seeing what I can improve. So. I'm, share, I'm going to share with you my stats, but not like I usually would of, you know, jumping onto the computer and going through each of the different analytics. If you're interested in what I track, please do go and watch one of my previous monetization videos because that will show you exactly which metrics I'm tracking. And if you watch the one from two weeks ago, which I'll put in the description, it'll give you a clear understanding of the progress up until then. So the question is, did I manage to get monetized in under 10 weeks? Even though my goal was 20 weeks. That's what I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. Results, thought I'd just share some of the benefits I found from actually tracking my metrics, um, especially as somebody who isn't driven by the numbers usually. I think the first and most important aspect is it's given me some really valuable feedback. So now that I'm starting to understand what the metrics mean, I'm able to look and see which videos do well. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason in all honesty to why some seem to do better than others. Uh, because quite often what I'm finding is I seem to be doing the same thing in as much as similar style of thumbnails, trying to keep my titles short and descriptive. Um, so that, although I'm trying to do the same sort of things, um, I'm getting quite different results, but what it, what it does show me is that certain topics seem to do better than others. So when I'm talking about ADHD, my numbers aren't getting as much reach as when I talk about just being a midlife woman or an over 50s woman and some of the more sort of story based content seems to do better. I've done a little bit of experimenting with faceless videos where I do voiceover B-roll, but I've done a couple where I've tried not to have me in the video particularly at all. I might have a bit of me doing something, but my voice is the voiceover and they've not done well at all. Although the feedback I've had from people who've watched them have said they've enjoyed them in terms of reach and being chosen to be watched they've not done particularly well. So being able to look at my content and analyze it, as I say, isn't something that comes naturally to me, 
but it's definitely helping me to maybe see patterns and be able to interpret viewer preferences. Um, I put up a video yesterday about um, having too many ideas as an ADHD person and not doing you know enough to follow through and it really performed quite badly for the first few hours and I made the decision to change the thumbnail. I went from having quite a, a stern look on my face to having a much more oh sort of almost light-hearted expression on my face and that actually picked up a little bit it's still not doing brilliantly but it's picked up a little bit so I'm starting to learn that tweaking the thumbnail tweaking the title can have an impact on click-through rate which is how often people actually choose to open the video and watch it when it's shown to them I haven't done today's numbers yet normally what I would do is I would go and get onto the computer and do my uh, analytics update my spreadsheet and then I'd go back in with the camera rolling and I'd talk you through what I've done well I haven't done that yet today so I've still got that to do <laughs> so I'm talking a little bit without without knowing the numbers from this week but so that's that's the first thing that I found has been really helpful in in you know looking at the analytics I think the second benefit that I'm realizing is we have a natural, I think as humans, negative bias. So we tend to focus on things where, that don't seem to be doing as well. So I found over the last eight or, uh, eight or nine weeks of tracking that when I think it's been a bad week, when I actually look at the numbers, I can see growth. And it's rewarding, it's reassuring, it's encouraging when you see those numbers um, and it's data, it's raw data, raw facts to counteract some of that negative bias because when you put videos out and they don't perform and you feel like you've put your heart and soul into creating them and you know they've taken maybe a good few hours to plan, record, edit and publish, it can be really quite disheartening. So seeing the numbers almost counters that negative feeling because it, it gives you an objective view of how the channel is doing as opposed to my own subjective negative bias. So that's been really interesting. So let's talk about monetization. Did I monetize my channel in 10 weeks? So yes and no. So I did manage to get over the thousand subscribers which is what you need in order part of what you need in order to lock the partner program with youtube i'm now currently at 1363 subscribers which i'm very very happy about although <laughs> it does seem to be a bit of a a two up two down struggle i gain two i lose two i gain two i lose two but i think that's just the nature of the game but I didn't reach the 4,000 watch hours to get full access to the YouTube Partner Programme and start to monetize my content through AdSense or advert, you know, adverts on my videos. However, I did reach the 3,000 watch hour threshold, which has opened up the first tier of monetization. What that means is I can I get an income <laughs> very small albeit from things like lovely subscribers supporting the channel with super chats and super thanks it means if I wanted to I could start a YouTube membership and hello I can start a YouTube membership if I want to using the YouTube membership platform and I could also have products through sort of our YouTube shopping none of which I'm particularly interested in at the moment. Um, although a super thanks might be nice. Um, so yes, I've unlocked part of monetization for which I'm really happy. I am now a YouTube partner, although not fully opened up all of the aspects of that. But one thing that has happened which just really goes to show that AdSense and the other, other way, the other ways that we associate with monetizing our channels 
aren't the only way because directly as a consequence of one of my videos one of my uh, subscribers to, or left a comment with a struggle they were having and asked if it was something I could help with and it is something I could help with and so we connected and she's become one of my coaching clients and she's she's beautiful she's such a lovely lady and she found me directly through my YouTube content so I took on a new client for 800 pounds and that's got nothing to do with being monetized and everything to do with just consistently putting out content that hopefully resonates with people now of course <laughs> you have to have something a service that you provide and I am a certified women's coach and I coach from an ADHD friendly position I coach women in terms of helping them to really understand who they are especially if they've had a, a late diagnosis of ADHD which can completely throw us off, off balance and to set some life goals for themselves and you know that's aside to YouTube that I would be lying if I said wasn't part of the plan I am a businesswoman after all but it's been it happened much much sooner than I expected and without actually having to go down the traditional route of lead magnets lead generators putting people onto an email list now I'm not saying it will always happen like that and either there's certainly merit in having some sort of funnel but it just goes to show that a you don't need huge huge subscriber numbers to be able to attract your ideal clients and to be able to help people you just need I guess to have the right message at the right time for the right person to hear so whilst I've not hit the AdSense threshold I would say I have definitely monetized my YouTube channel and I've still got another 10 weeks to go in my personal challenge to hit that second threshold when I looked this morning I'm at 3,092 watch hours so I've got less than a thousand watch hours to make up in that time which I think is eminently doable if I continue to create content and all in all I'm really happy with progress and I'm really happy that I made the decision to start tracking my analytics because I think whilst I can't say that tracking my analytics is the reason why I've grown I think I've grown because I've been very consistent and making uh, quite a significant amount of content I do think that it's probably helped me to stay on track and to understand what it is I'm doing see patterns and trends and just feel more confident about what I'm doing so there you go I hope you've enjoyed that if you've got questions please do leave them in the comments and I'll leave it there for today take care